Well, I am alongside Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell. I know you are a super busy man right now, so we appreciate you taking some time to break down what happened on the first round of the 2024 NFL Draft. And my first question for you was more on a personal level. Yeah. We'll get into the X's and O's in just a bit. But how did you sleep? How do you feel? You feel rested after the results from round one? Yeah, didn't get a whole lot of sleep, but uh, on, a, on a night like that, knowing all the lead in, all the work that went into mm -hmm. um, feeling like we we're totally prepared uh, for the draft to get going and then how it played out. Um, I don't know if you can, um, I don't know if you, you pulled the folks in our draft room going into it, if we could feel better today. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's possible, knowing that uh, we obviously added J.J. and mm -hmm. Dallas, two players that we identified uh, as players we wanted to become Minnesota Vikings. Mm -hmm. And really just want to credit Kwesi, his staff, the process that, uh, that all went into it uh, for us to feel the way we do today. And, and it's a credit to a lot of hard work and a lot of great people. Talking to you leading up to this draft, quarterback was obviously a huge concern of yours. You made it almost personal to select the yeah. QB that you will be molding into the future for this team. How are you feeling today about being able to get your hands on J.J. McCarthy? Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And, and you go back to the process and we were able to get to know uh, a bunch of players in this draft, spend time with them away from uh, our facility here, some coming to uh, Minnesota to spend time with us. But what the process led us to is, is to really envision what it's going to be like to coach uh, JJ on a daily basis, getting him in our building around our team. Um, and I just knew going into last night, uh, like I said, if we could come out with uh, JJ McCarthy as our quarterback of the future and then, a, and then add an impact, a real impact player on the, on the defensive front, um, I was going to be uh, you know, on cloud nine. So really excited for the rest of the draft, obviously to continue putting a stamp on what I think has been a fantastic start to the draft for us. Yeah, a lot of experts are saying that this that you guys won the first round, that you got the steal of the draft in Dallas Turner. When you hear things like that, what are your thoughts? Well, I just think you trust your board. You trust mm -hmm. how a lot of really smart people, coaches, personnel, uh, Kwesi, myself, you know, really coming together to create that board and then trusting in the fact that uh, however the draft goes, we had played out a lot of scenarios in our minds as far as uh, what our plans would be at some, kind of some of those intersection points because I did think that it would be a unique draft clearly with the six yeah. quarterbacks going uh, how fast they went uh, but also knowing the receiver position the tackle position uh, clearly uh, not necessarily positions of need for us here in Minnesota what that would mean to players like Dallas Turner and uh, when and where we would have to be aggressive mm -hmm. to maybe go get that player uh, and like I said you know where, where Dallas was on our board to say that we were able to get him when we did uh, home run for Kwesi and, and, and the group and, and just nothing uh, but strong feelings today and then got even better today when we welcome, into yeah. our, welcome them into our building as Minnesota Vikings and see them hold up that jersey. Uh, really, really cool. I mean, you, you, you mentioned the six quarterbacks off the board and you guys, you know, you start seeing them go and you start seeing them oh, go. Yeah. Like, how are, like, take us inside those emotions from the draft room. Like, you're kind of sitting here. Were you sweating? Were you, how are you feeling? I claim Tatum to be a very <laughs> process driven guy, yeah. but uh, when so much is outside of your control uh, and those 10 minute blocks are starting yeah. and going and things are happening really fast and, and you're seeing the quarterbacks come off the board mm -hmm. uh, the way, you know, we expected, you know, the draft to be teams to be aggressive at the quarterback position, but that reality starts setting in of, mm -hmm. of maybe what if or, uh, you know, where, what's the next plan going to be? Um, but ultimately, uh, the guy that uh, was meant to be a Minnesota mm -hmm. Viking ended up coming here today. Uh, you know, cannot wait to get going with JJ. But the, the draft, as, as fans were feeling at home, uh, maybe you were feeling there in Detroit. I, no, I was. I, uh, I was sweating. I there's, <laughs> there's no hiding the fact that that's what makes the NFL draft so spectacular. Sure. It looked like a great atmosphere in Detroit. And uh, it didn't really sound like Dallas took too many boos. Uh, when he walked out on the stage. So all in all, I don't know if it could have gone better for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you there. It was a little, it got a little, I got a little nervous. The fans, I think, got a little bit nervous, but we got the guy. He's in the building. What are your expectations for JJ in his first year? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, what I've really stressed to him is uh, I'm a relationship-based leader, and uh, so is he. So what better way to get off to a good start than build our relationship up, uh, not only with myself, but with Josh and Grant, uh, Sam, uh, you know, Nick and Jaron in the quarterback room, but really our entire 
uh, organization, our entire locker room. I got a ton of text messages from our players last night after okay. each picks, just how excited they were. Um, but it's going to be a daily, you know, a daily focus, laser focus on attacking just little things, the details, the growth and development of a quarterback uh, is something that I hold near and dear to my heart and, and take a lot of pride in years and years of both personal, um, you know, highs and lows with that journey, but also being around some great quarterbacks throughout my journey and really seeing uh, what I believe is an, it's an always evolving process for me, um, but at the same time, I feel very strongly about what we've built here and my role in helping JJ become the best version of himself. Uh, the phone call sold me. I was like, you guys have been friends for years. Yeah. It really, you could already kind of feel that cultivating. But I think th as, as interesting as JJ's phone call was, I thought your reaction when Quasey walked over to you and said, <laughs> we got Dallas Turner, may maybe going viral right now. I mean, yeah. that, that felt like genuine shock. Well, once again, when you get one of the, you know, you know, right at the top of your board defensively, yeah. uh, you're looking at this name um, and you really don't think, because we're not the only ones. And, and I can tell by the reaction from a lot of coaches around the league today that I'm talking to, uh, the shock that we were able to do what we did. Uh, we hosted Dallas here at our building. Mm -hmm. I got to spend a good amount of time with him, really watch him interact with our defensive staff and some of the players that were uh, in the building at the time. And uh, just envisioning a scenario where we get that quarterback and then we also get Dallas. Like I said, it was, you know, a best case scenario for us as an organization and it came to life. So that joy, <laughs> that excitement, that shock in that moment of uh, really never wanting to expect something like that to happen. Um, I'm glad it's uh, going viral for, viral for the right reasons because yeah. uh, that emotion, I'm sure, was matched by a lot of our fans at home. For sure. What, what is something specific that you noticed about Dallas when he was interacting with the defensive coaching? Yeah, so. just his football intelligence. Uh, you know, it's off the charts as far as his understanding of pass rush, mm -hmm. um, his role within a one of 11 mindset of, of, a, of a defensive structure. He's been coached, you know, by one of the greatest college football coaches, uh, you know, in history and Nick Saban. And, and you see a lot of the principles that, that hold true for our organization as far as team building, culture, accountability, those things are huge from where he's come from. Mm -hmm. So it's ingrained in who he is. You know, we've gotten a chance to get to know his mom and dad and brother, and you can see that it started at home for him um, with that upbringing and, and uh, actually played, uh, you know, with, for, with the New York Jets with his cousin, right. uh, Wallace Wright. Uh, so the connections are obviously mm -hmm. there, but uh, make no mistake about it, uh, Dallas is ready to roll, you know, ripping off that edge, affecting yeah. the passer being a force in the run game, uh, just envisioning him with some of the additions we added in free agency, as well as the great players we had coming back, uh, really exciting. Well, you mentioned Nick Saban, his coach. He was talking about him on draft day, comparing him to Donta Hightower. Mm -hmm. That has to be pretty promising. Do you, do you see similar comparisons? Well, you go back in his tape, which we clearly do, and he played off the ball mm -hmm. um, at different times in his career. He played obviously on the ball. He's a unique rusher that can really rush off the edge. Uh, you know, rush in the interior, you know, really as a matchup nightmare, depending on where we want to attack an offensive line on a given week. So uh, I think the versatility when you mix that with uh, Jonathan Grenard, Andrew Van Ginkle, Blake yeah. Cashman and IP at the linebacker position, um, it really gives you some. Uh, and, and when I say you, I mean Brian Flores. <laughs> uh, now I'm starting to worry about how we're going to block him in, in OTAs and training camp. But uh, yeah. that's a good problem to have known eventually 17 times. Plus, hopefully, uh, offensive coordinators are having to worry about that. So we've got good vibes coming from the first, the first round, yep. and we've got a big day on Saturday. What do you hope to attack on Saturday? Yeah, I think, you know, across the board, you know, we'll stay true to, the, to the, our draft board and understanding uh, where we can pick up some value. And uh, we feel good about the depth that we've been able to kind of build throughout the whole process. Really, Thursday night was about impact of uh, you know, some f two foundational players to build around for a long time in this organization. Uh, the rest of the draft is where you really cement um, you know, the characteristics of how you want to play on offense, defense, possibly special teams. And if you, you hold true to those values, stay true to the board, I think we're going to have a chance to add five really good players. And we always know um, when that phone rings, nobody better to answer it than Quasi yeah. uh, and his ability to make some things happen. I was going to say, we've got five picks. Is that, are you telling us that we're staying at five picks? <laughs> I don't know who's watching. So if you're out there and you're interested in giving us a call, there you go. Um, we're, uh, we're ready to take that phone call. Well, Coach, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to things. Congratulations on a successful first round. Thank you, Tatum.